When I was little, my mom was my first line of defense. If I tripped and hurt myself, I went to mom. If I didn't know how to do something, I asked my mom. And if a bigger kid came along and took my Legos, you bet I went to mom. <laughs> my mom is my shield. She is my support, my protection. She is what stands between me and the rest of the world. Every day, she takes care of four kids without a single bit of hesitation. And she does it like a champ. Every day, she does the, she does the best that she can for us, including one day last year when everything changed. After a long day of school, I got home and began talking to my mom, who was sitting in the kitchen. We had our normal after-school conversation, like we did almost every other day. But I could tell something was off, something I couldn't quite place, despite how normal she was acting. I was watching her lips move, but I wasn't listening to the words. And as the details continued on, our conversation normally over at this point, she looked me squarely in the eyes, and she said, Olivia, I have breast cancer. My aching legs felt like they were going to give out beneath me. It felt like the oxygen was being sucked out of the room. I had that same feeling in my stomach, the one you get before a test or a race, or right as you reach the top of a roller coaster and know you're about to go racing down. I'll admit, I was in shock full of disbelief, not wanting to face my new reality. So the next day, I went to school, and everything was exactly the same as it had been the day before. But everything had changed, at least for me. Though my external environment was the same, my internal was completely different. Everything seemed to be moving as easily as fish in a sea, but I was stuck. Stuck like coral to the bottom of an ocean, watching everything rush by. Eventually, I told my friends, and they shared their support. They made ribbons in my mom's honor, and we wore them all the time. Even if we forgot them, someone always had a Sharpie to spare. It was a badge of courage we were proud to wear. Before my mom's surgery, she had put on a strong exterior, kind of like a bear protecting its cubs. And now she could hardly get out of bed. This is a woman who raised four kids on her own while my dad was deployed overseas. This is the soccer mom who always brought orange slices anywhere we went. And the mom who stayed up all night to rub our backs if we were sick. And now, she was lying in a bed in front of me. And I couldn't do a single thing to help the discomfort from the tubes draining blood out of her or the itchy gauze covering up her recent wounds from surgery. All I could do was wait. After weeks of recovery, she got better. Life went on, and her scars eventually healed. But the battle wasn't over yet. It was time for stage two of her treatment, chemotherapy. The first day of chemo, she was feeling great. She was up walking around, talking with us, and then, day, and then day two hit, and she could hardly get out of bed because she was so tired. After her second or third treatment, we began to notice her hair thinning. Her hair loss progressed a lot faster than we expected, and it got to the point where she wasn't washing or even brushing her hair because the blonde chunks that fell out would be too much. Seeing my mom lose her hair made me sick. Even, all, even after all the rashes, tubes, and tears, she wasn't able to salvage the part us girls rely most heavily on, our hair. I know it seems silly that our hair Strands of dead cells hanging off her scalp matter so much to us, but it does. According to naturallycurly.com, women say they feel more attractive and confident when their hair is in tip-top shape versus when they're having a bad hair day. Our appearance, especially our hair, plays an important role in our lives due to societal standards. 
our hair plays a more important role than we'd like to admit. Without her long blonde hair, she hid under hats and bandanas, trying to cover up the illness which had taken her identity. But it wasn't just her own problem with her self-image. It was that she didn't want us to see the physical toll it had taken on her body. And when the chemo was said and done, and she was officially in remission, she picked up right where she left off, running us kids around everywhere without even taking a breath. But she wasn't the same mom that I had before her bout with cancer. She changed. She wasn't her old self, inside or out. I now had a mom who had proven her strength and punched cancer right in the nose by getting up and going on. Slowly, as her hair grew back, she found ways of embracing something which had pushed her down before. Although she was insecure about the length and style, she had to accept there was nothing physical she could do other than embrace it. Watching this, I learned your insecurities don't have to put you down unless you let them. The things that take away the most can be the foundation for a stronger you. Sure, my mom's hair was beautiful before, but it was meaningless. Before cancer, her sole source of confidence came from her hair. And after, it became an accessory to her, to her inner confidence. Now, her hair shows her story. It shows her strength and her courage in the face of cancer. It's so much more than beautiful. It's strong. Thank you.